So the two classes, there's a beginner jumpstart class, and that's going to be like all the other jumpstart classes where we talk about the supplies, all those basic techniques and everything. And then there's going to be also launched at the same time, because I know a lot of people already know everything about the Art Impressions watercolor stamps. And the intermediate one is going to be a mini class, but it's going to be more in-depth with crazy scenes in it. And on YouTube, when the class goes live, there's going to be a video so you can see a preview of the kinds of things you'll learn in each one. But I thought I'd do a little video now and give you a mini preview preview of what that's going to be. So <laughs> I'll, I'll just give you a little bit on the supplies. One is the markers. And this is one of the things we've been waiting on because Ellen's putting together a set of markers because I know everybody wants to use exactly the pens that I have. And I tried to limit myself. So I made a set of my favorite 20 colors. And that is the ones I'm showing you right here and the ones that are on screen. And Ellen's going to put together a set of those so you can buy just those markers and not anything else. You can also use the colors that are just like these, but they're in the conversion chart. So over on my teaching site, there is a conversion chart you can get for free. And you can use your distress markers or your zigs or all that sort of thing. But I know a lot of people want to use exactly what I've got. So this set will be available. If it becomes available this week, because as soon as they get them in and get them packaged up, they're going to put it on the website. Don't buy it yet. Because when the class launches, there's going to be a coupon code inside the classroom so that you can go get your supplies at a discount. So you might watch for them, but please don't get overexcited unless you don't want the discount. You can be the first one to buy them without the discount. So there you go. These are the, the basic colors that I'm using. And the reason I chose these, even for the conversion chart, is because it was the most apples to apples across the different lines of markers. So I thought the most people would have something to use for the class. So you do not have to have these markers to do either of the classes, but I'm going to use these in all of the future classes on the topic as well as future videos. So when I do videos on uh, uh, blah, 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 YouTube, yeah, that YouTube thing, I will also use these markers. So if you want to get them, you certainly can. But if you also have them, then that's fine too. You, you'll have the ones that are in the conversion chart. In the class, I'm also going to be using arches cold press paper and I'll show you in the pre-class lesson and uh, first lessons and stuff a little bit of why I use this because you get more intense color but for some people using the Canson XL is better just because you have trouble moving the color and that's perfectly fine too it'll look a little different but you can still use that as well so I've got a little piece of arches out here and I thought I would just do a quick demo and show you a little bit about Art Impressions watercolor. Because some people may not have any idea what it is. You're also going to need some blocks. You can use big blocks, but there's a little set of blocks, and this is not the full set. I think these might even be the, the really mini ones. I have um, the Art Impression set has like five blocks in it, and they're you know around this size. There are some little teeny tiny ones that I have that I've kept for probably a dozen years. And these are super tiny. And I use them just because I had all of my stamps at once on the um, on the blocks so I could do the class and not have to be putting stamps on and off. So you will see these teeny tiny ones. But if you remember, there used to be these things called dollar stamps. And when I first started stamping, they had a lot of these dollar stamps and they came with these itty bitty blocks. So if you have any of those, they're really helpful. But I haven't seen anybody else who makes them. They're like a half inch big. So... Now, as for the stamps in class, Ellen's going to have, I said, as I said, a discount on them. Um, some of the main ones are going to be the, the flowers. There's going to be some foliage and flower stamps that you're going to need. If you have different ones and you want to use different flowers and grasses, perfectly fine. But I'm going to use these in all of them so that, again, you don't have to buy a million of them if you want to take all the classes and that sort of thing. So there's those. In the Jumpstart class, we're going to do some stuff with containers. We're going to do a wooden gate. Uh, I picked this barn set because it has not only the barn, but it has a tree and a fence. So you can buy some sets that just have a tree, buy some sets that just have a barn, 
or you can buy one that has a little bit and that's a smattering. In the advanced class, there's some other stamps and that might not even be all of them. I don't remember at the very second, but in the advanced class, there's a bench that you're gonna need for all of the cards because I do five different scenes with a bench. And um, there are other stamps to go with it. You know, there's um, this one, which I'm gonna use today is some of these really pretty decorative jars. And there's more stamps than that, but you'll find out all about all of that later. And Ellen's going to have a page where she's going to have all of them in one place. Um, my stamps, I keep in these CD cases. And I keep them by what kind of stamp they are. So I keep all of my grasses in one, kind of my weird flowers in another. I keep my dogs and cats together. So I sort them. I break them up by... You know, I break up the stamp sets and I, I keep them in a way they make sense. So if I'm going to look for animals, I'm going to just pull out my animals one. This one has a bunch of different animals in it, um, different variety of them and that sort of thing. There's one card in the advanced class that uses the dogs. It's a dog park picture, but you can just do the park. You don't have to do the dogs. So if you want to limit your stamp purchases, you can do that. There's also um, cats available. There's also bunnies and all sorts of other animals. So you can use some of those as well. But you can also do just the park because not everybody needs every stamp. So let's pick out one of these guys. Maybe I'll use, is this one of the ones from that set? Yes, it is. It's a little more of a straight up kind of stamp. And with these, you put them on the blocks. And I want to dampen this a little bit if your stamps don't stick really well. Just get it a little bit damp. I did just took a little baby wipe to it. And stick it on. And then I'm going to put some color on it. Uh, what color shall we do? Let's do a mixed color one. So I'll do one that looks like it is rustic. So I'm gonna put some of this sort of reddish medium brown on it. Just apply the ink straight to the stamp. And then let's do a little bit of green and we'll make it a little bit distressy and rustic. And I'm gonna throw in a little bit of a lighter green too, just for kicks. Just a few drops of it. And then if your stamp has been sitting there for a while, you can just huff on it. <sighs> um, that was not long enough to need it, but there you go. Did it anyway. And then just stamp it. Then you can take your brush and get a number eight round. You can use a water brush, an aqua brush for these, but I tend to find um, that they, they just put out too much water for me. I, I, not a big fan of that. But all I'm going to do is add water around the edges because that water is going to carry the pigment from the markers. And immediately I start getting a little bit of color mixing from the greens that I put down and that brownish color. And I can put a bunch of water down and get a really soft look for this. I'm going to leave some white parts in here too. And I can also then take another block, grab one that I'm not going to stamp with, and you can add other colors to it. And if I want this to contain, continue to have more of a rustic feel, I'm going to add a little bit of a blue. Just dropping some color in here. And look how pretty that is with all those colors mixing because it's wet and wet. So I'm just going to add a little bit of it. And I'm not adding it evenly. I'm just putting it in a few spots and I get this beautiful vase with a handle on it that is just cute as a button. I like it. And then pick out some flowers to go in it. 
And again, in the class, I'm going to show you, I have little swatches of each one of, let me see if I can find the envelope. In the class, I'm going to have swatches that have each of the stamped images on them. And I'll have a picture of all the stamps that I used. Because a lot of times when, you, um, when you're going to grab a stamp, if I were to, to try to describe that, it's kind of hard to describe. <laughs> You know what I mean? So when you're watching the videos, you might want to have this pulled up beside watching the video to figure out which stamps it is that I'm using. And you'll be able to sort of figure that out. I mean, the grasses, there's a small and a large grass. You can verbally say that, but it's hard to explain, like, what is that thing? Because I use this one for a lot of stuff. So there, in the class, there's going to be those, plus there's going to be swatches of the marker colors that are used for that card so that you can find all that really easily because I want you to be able to find it. And there's one other piece. I thought I had it out that has that very favorite flower in it. And I haven't seen it here yet. What did I do with it? I thought it was in one of these packs. Oh, well, no, that's not it. It's similar to that. Oh, there it is. There's that little guy. This little guy is one of the most useful stamps. It looks like just a dumb little leaf thing, but I find it very helpful. And you can see I have definitely mixed up all my sets. I have so many little flowers to choose from. Um, a lot of people don't want to break up their stamp sets. They want to store them together, which is fine. But what I do instead is keep all of these sheets and then if I ever need to go and find out what set it's in, I can go to these and look at the images and figure out which ones go with what. And I did a big resort of everything for this class so that I could have that kind of organized. Okay, there's that little guy. And how about we also use some of these little flowers and this little clump of flowers. So I will pick out those guys and I'm going to get it a little bit damp. I also have on mine little pieces of double stick tape and if you're going to be peeling things off and on regularly especially in class then you may want to put a little bit of that double stick tape on because it's going to hold everything in place because I found it was really helpful to have everything ready and on a block before I started the project because <laughs> otherwise you would be constantly watching me uh, change those and swap them around and that would be a ridiculous waste of your time and I am not into wasting your time. So I'm going to take my light first. I do this a little differently than Bonnie does. Bonnie is the owner of Art Impression Stamps and the designer of these and the inventor of the whole line. There are some videos by Bonnie in the class. They're ones that she just has on YouTube. I invited her to create, if she would like, a little video for the class, but she declined just due to being super busy. So she said I could put some of her videos in the classroom so you can get alternate ideas on how to do things. Um, I'm seeing a few comments online, but I haven't seen anybody doing major talking, so that's why I'm not addressing comments, by the way. So if you have questions as we go, give a shout. So I've stamped a couple of these leaves, and then I'm going to kind of start to work those leaves in so I get some overall water, and it's going to make more of a cloud of the leaves and things that are in here. And that's going to give me a base to start the whole thing from. Now, Bonnie would not do it this way. She does it, a, a, you know, has a different approach to it. But I like to just have that color so that those greens create that, that poofiness. And then I insert the flowers into it. So <clears throat> that's what we're going to insert with these little guys. I dabbed off the excess water because I put so much down. I want some dampness there, but if you want really hard edges, then you just let the first color dry. 
but if you want it to sort of blend in a little bit, you can put it into paper that's a little bit wet. This one is fairly dry now, so it's not moving very much on its own. But I can soften those up with just touching the little bit of the water to it. And let's try a few other flowers. Let's try this one. This flower is kind of cool. It's a series of hearts, basically. It looks like a whole bunch of hearts in a circle. But if you water it out the right way, you can make it look like a daisy with all kinds of petals around it. Because all you do is join those little hearts and you end up with a flower with a hole in the middle. Ba -ba -dum -bum. Now we have these little daisies in there too. And let's see, we should probably add some more flowers in here. Because we can, you know. And I'm going to grab these little dots. They don't tend to work on their own as a flower, but they have enough little tiny detail in them that I like to just kind of put a little color on them and tap just the edge so that I get almost little peaking dots of color. Now that's not something you can't do with a brush. So you could always do that just using a brush itself. But it gives me that little extra bit of detail that's kind of fun. And then for my finishing touch, I'm gonna pick out a, a little bit of leaf. And I'm gonna use a dark green this time. My lid back on that purple marker. See, now that is why these things don't always stick really great, especially when you've used them a bunch. You can wash the stamps entirely. Let me see if I can press that down because it's already got ink on it. I don't wanna to get too much ink all over my finger. But I'm gonna just tap the edge of it and not the whole thing necessarily, because I want just some of it to hang down out of the bottom. Eh, it's moving around again. Where's that block that has the sticky on it? Because <laughs> I want it to hold still. Okay, apparently I need more. So, let me grab a little bit of, the, what I use on these is the double stick tape, the Be Creative tape that I like so much, just a little tiny piece of it. It'll eventually become unsticky, but it stays good and sticky so I can keep re-sticking different stamps onto it. And these I want to be a little sharper because they are, in the front. So anything in the front is going to be a little bit more detailed than things in the background. So I'm just gonna make a few more of those. I feel like I need a little something right there in the center. See if I can do that without covering up any of the other stamps. And then I can soften some of them, but not all of them because I want to leave that nice sharp detail that adds contrast. Because with watercolor, one of the fun things is having the combination of soft edges and hard edges. And a lot in the class is going to talk about that. The different kinds of edges you can get, whether you're doing wet in wet or wet on dry, etc. So that one has more hard edges in it. This one I can go back in now. Even though I've already finished that little painting. And I can add a couple of really sharp edges in this one. 
you can rework these as much as you want to keep improving them. And look at the difference that it makes to have just those little hard edges to add those very fine little lines. And this one has more that's filled in. This one is a little more open. So every time you do one of these, they're going to be different. So hello to those of you who have joined in on the video. I know I don't do many of these Facebook Lives because I'm such a technical noogle head. I don't really do very well at them. But I thought I would do that in advance of the classes that are coming up. So for those who are joining in late, there are two classes. The projected date that I'm going to stick with for now is December 6th, which will be on Friday. And the supplies will be available in the Ellen Hudson shop. They're also available other places, but Ellen's going to have a discount for you because she's awesome. So you may not want to buy your stuff too soon. You may want to wait until the classroom is open and has the coupon code in it. I don't even know myself what the coupon code will be, so I can't even give you a heads up about that. But there you go. So what color should we make this one? So I'm doing fine. Thank you. Good. Because, <laughs> yeah, the beginning of this, for those who watched from the very beginning, was a little weird because I had my volume doing strange things. Maybe that was the problem when I tried calling my mom and we were trying to do Facebook Messenger and she said she couldn't hear me. So glad it's clear. Yay. Maybe let's do a, a pink and purple vase this time. How about that? So we'll do a, this little teapot. And this is from one of the stamp sets that's in the intermediate class. So there will be, for those who missed the beginning, uh, an intermediate and a beginner class. The jumpstart class is the beginner. The mini class will be the advanced, and it's going to have lots more different stamps in it and it's going to do crazy scenes and that kind of stuff for those who are ready for it. I don't usually launch an intermediate at the same time as a beginner, but I know a lot of people, they do these art impressions things all the time and I wanted to give them something to enjoy. Oh, you want it to look clear. Hmm. I wonder if I can make it look clear. Let's see if we can do that. Make this look like it's a clear vase. It'll have a little purple tint to it <laughs> since we already have purple here. So I'm going to just make a few shadows here that will create that part of the vase that's not got water in it. Like the outside glass portion. And then I'm going to grab a dull-ish blue. And we'll add the water. Let's see. It's kind of some bluish blobs. And then after we get the flowers in, we can do some stems down there that go into the water. How about that? Now let's try doing something with the very same flowers as I did on that last one. Sorry, my fingers are like really dirty. I was doing pastels this morning and with like blacks and browns and I can't seem to get my hands clean. <laughs> so I'm here with crazy dirty hands. So let's, instead of the other... Oh, and there go the dogs. Instead of using that same color for the background greens, this time I'm going to do more with the same green that I did with the detail. And notice I'm doing first and second generation stamping.
possible to zoom in a bit. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit without ruining anything. Is that zoomed in now? And don't worry, in the classroom you'll get to have lots of zoomed in stuff. <laughs> Hopefully that's better. Now I've lost comments. All right, so now I've got my water on the brush. And again, I'm gonna start by doing the water on the stamped portions first, because I can keep some of those edges nice and detailed and soften them without losing them. And I'm just kind of skipping the brush around a little bit, just dancing it around the surface. And then when I get to the stuff in the middle, I'm just gonna use my brush to spread that out so that I get that soft edge that'll start to fill in my basic greens here. And now I have something to stamp into, and this time I'm not going to dry it like I did before. And you know what? I'm gonna use my favorite little stamp. I use this one a ton in the class because I like it a lot. And we're gonna use it for flowers this time. In this one, we used it for greens. But I'm gonna do these wet in wet so you can see just how soft they get when you go wet in wet. So you can wet it afterward to soften it, or you can do it at the beginning like this. And here I'm stamping partway on and partway off the water, so I end up with both in it, both the wet and the dry. And even though this is a, a stamp that I often use for greens, it works great for flowers too. So now we need a little more sharp detail because we're getting mushy. So I think I'm going to add a different green. And this time, and this is where, you know, you can use all of these stamps for anything. I'm going to use these for more sharp green edges. This time, using it over here for that, here I used it for flowers. So I'm going to let more of these act instead like almost a baby's breath kind of little leaf sticking out the edges. That's one of the fun things that makes all of these Art Impressions watercolors different because there's no way you could ever do the same thing twice. Like I could follow my own lessons and my own instructions and not be doing the same thing twice. So if I can't do it, don't expect that yours is gonna come out exactly the same. Yours is gonna come out the way yours comes out and it's gonna be just as beautiful. So, I'm gonna add some water to that, but first I'm gonna add my greens to come down here into the vase. And I'm gonna see how lightly I can touch on the surface of the paper so I get that skippy line. Sometimes we don't want the skippy line and we're like, oh, I don't like the lumpy paper. The lumpy paper gives me a skippy line. Well, here we actually want the skippy line because you don't want it, uh, you wouldn't see completely, I'll see, this is still wet, so I'm getting a really nice kind of softer line in here. Because if you were just painting flowers in a jar, you wouldn't get a solid line going through there. You'd see a white line around that edge. You'd see some other things that you'd get some that are darker and some that are lighter, just like I got here. So that's perfect that it was done right on top of all of that mess. Um, so instead of whining about it, I'm going to just be happy that it came out the way it did. Now I want to add some more contrast in this one than I did in the last one. And I can do that by just taking that dark green, more dark green, 
I used too much water. And I'm also going to use a little different grain. Sorry, I put the pen in my mouth and you can't understand me. And I can go in here with my darker green and fill in some of those blanks just by painting with the brush instead of stamping into it. And put some extra color in. Now this, um, these jars are used in the intermediate class. In the beginning class, you're going to learn how to make some of these bouquets, but we're not necessarily putting them in big jars. But if you like this big jar set, go ahead and get it for the beginner class. And you can make jars with bouquets of flowers instead of just doing the bouquet itself. So I have in uh, beginner class, there's some that have the... Uh, Uh, sorry, my brain is not in gear with my mouth while I'm trying to paint. <laughs> uh, they just have a little string tied around them as bouquets instead. Uh, one of the funny things that I did do, which I would love if some people would help me out here. When I was sending out cards recently, I got all excited because I now had all of these Art Impressions watercolor cards to send. And I went and did that, and now I don't have any of the samples left of the stuff that's in class. And Ellen was asking me for a picture of some of it so that she could use it on her website. And I was like, oh man, I don't have any of the cards left. I have one card left from that. And that's this one. It's the only one that I saved. The rest of them are all gone. My mom got one and all kinds of people. So if you got one of those cards, do me a huge favor and post a picture of it in the comments section of this video so that then other people can see some of the cards from class. I do have some pictures that are in class, but I don't have like the physical card itself. So if you got one, then post a picture of it. So there is that jar. And to add more contrast, just because I'm wacky that way, because I look at that and it, it feels dark, but it doesn't feel like as dark as it could. So I'm gonna take a couple other colors. I'm gonna take a little bit of blue. Sorry, I should do this here. Where you can see it. And a little bit of purple. And let's see. I'll throw in a little bit of green just so I make sure I don't totally lose all the greenness. But I want to put some really darks in here. And so I'm just going to drop in this bluish, purple, greenish thing. And look what happens when I suddenly put real contrast in here. It suddenly starts having even more depth because now I've got just a couple areas where I've got some real darks. And since they're already wet from everything else I already did, then the color moves out into those other areas and looks like more detailed little flowery things. I mean, the difference in that, just by adding the, just that mix of mushy color, there's no recipe for that. It's just adding something dark. It makes a huge difference. Bada boom, bada bing. And I can pull some of that other color down in here now too. I know this is getting like crazy advanced. Um, those of you who've taken my Glass coloring class and Copic markers. We'll have a little easier time doing crazy things like this, but I'm going to add that contrasting color down here as well, just in a few spots. And maybe I'll put a link to this video in the classroom for those who didn't get to see this. So you can get an idea of some other ways to do things. But look at how much that added by just creating more contrast. Soften up that a little bit. Make sure that that feels like the vase color by bringing 
a little more of it elsewhere too. But anyway, you could fuss around with these kinds of things forever. You could just keep going. Um, don't keep going too far because then you'll potentially do yourself in. <laughs> and you don't want to do yourself in. There are some lessons in the Jumpstart class as well about creating shadows. Um, more on ex creating extreme shadows. This one, if the lighting was straight up and down, then you'd have the lighting straight under here. But I'm just going to pull more over to one side because that's going to make it feel like the light's coming from this way. Shadows always look better when the viewer can tell, even if they don't understand it, they can tell that there's more light on one side than another. It just gives it gives it a place to live in space. And let's see. Since we're talking about contrast, then let's add a little bit more of that darker color out here too. So there we go. Thank you very much for joining me for this. Again, watch for notification on YouTube when the, when the class goes live, because as soon as it's ready, I'll have that going on. It could be Thursday night, because I tend to like do things at weird hours because <laughs> trying to do things before I go to bed or whatever, like this morning, I realized I hadn't turned off the coupon code from Black Friday, so some people got an extra extended deal. Um, all kinds of things. Did I say that would be in the beginning class? There's some things, yes, that will be in the beginner class. Um, lots of bouquets like this are at the beginning of it. Okay, let me zoom back out. There we go. So you can see my three pretty vases. The uh, intermediate class has more scene-based stuff. So we'll do um, a bunch of different stuff with benches. There's one where I actually figured out how to do a winter forest, which is really, really cool. I did not think it was possible to do that, and I figured it out. And it taught me a whole lot about how to paint now with my regular watercolors as well. So that was kind of exciting <laughs> that I could learn how from doing Art Impressions watercolor, learn a technique to use for my regular watercolors. Because I'm teaching a class at Daniel Smith in January all about painting snow, and it was really helpful to learn a new technique. So there we go. All my little stamps and everything. Set that up for a pretty cover picture for this video. And if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments, and I will be answering comments, of course, as always. I do answer the ones where there's actual questions. As far as I know, I haven't missed things, but if I have, I apologize. And in general, if it's not something that has a question, I just click the like button so you know I saw what you said. So I appreciate everything that you have to share. And that is about it for today, 45 minutes, and we are done. I'm going to go do some Small Business Saturday shopping. I saved all my errands to go out in the neighborhood and visit with local peeps. So there you go. Have a wonderful day. Go out and have dinner or lunch or something at some local place and put some money back into the economy and get my dog hairs off of my pictures here. <laughs> I have dog ears everywhere. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you again soon. Oh, one other thing before I go. I totally forgot. I'm going to be doing some flash sales over on my social media, so you're going to want to follow me on Instagram and Facebook because it's going to be like for the next six hours, a certain class is going to be 50% off or something. So check in regularly. And during the holidays, we're going to do something crazy like that. All right. See you guys later. Bye.